All right, here we go with 7.1, answer key. So let's do this. All right, the ratio of the angle measures in a triangle is 1 to 6 to 13. So we got an extended ratio here. And again, remember when we're thinking about uh, an extended ratio. Sorry, let me get this pen up. Um, basically, we're thinking about this as 1 parts to 6 parts to 13 parts. So literally 1 part to 6 parts, 13 parts. So we can sort of get how many how many parts we have total, right? There's 20 parts total. Uh, but in this case, they don't tell us the total, but we have to figure it out because we're talking about the angle measures of a triangle. So we know that that's going to be 180. So that has to be sort of the total here. So 20x uh, equals 180. And of course, 20x equals done, nine, nine. All right, that makes sense. So we have x equals nine towards the measure of each angle. So if we actually plug this back in, well, x is nine, so nine degrees is one of them. Uh, and then if, uh, we know that this is 117. These are all in degrees, right? So we have 9 degrees, uh, 117, and we have 54 degrees. All right. Um, so there, there, are the, there are the three right here. Bam, bam, bam. All right. So next one, we have the ratio of the side lengths of a quadrilateral is 2 to, f two to 4 to 5 to 7. So again, that's 2 to 5. Uh, I skipped four to four um, to seven. And we know that the perimeter, so all those sides added up, in other words, is 36. So we sort of do this whole thing. Uh, we get 18x equals 36, right? Is that right? Yeah. Okay. So we get x equals two. Um, and so when we get x equals two it says what is the shortest side so we just plug it back into the shortest which is going to be the two parts the two two of those x parts so that's going to be four the length of the shortest side is four um all right the ratio of the angle measures in a triangle so we kind of know that the, those add up to 180 and in this case we have the three angles are 5 to 12 to 19 so 5x plus 12x plus 19 essentially x um just adding them up. Uh, 5, 12, and 19 is 36. 36 total parts, and they have to add up to 180. So we have 180, and we divide by the, the 36, and we get 5. So we get each sort of part is 5. And so the largest angle was the 19. So in this case, 19 times 5 is just 95. So that would be our angle right there is 95. All right. So here we go, solving some proportions, no big deal here. We're gonna cross multiply and get two times 40 is 80. Uh, 16 times X is, I guess I should just write it out the first couple times. Two times 40 equals uh, X times 16. So 80 divided by 16, X equals five. And we solved. All right, we get 21 Y like this. And then we get seven times 27, which is 189. And then we get, divide that by 21, get nine. So Y is nine, awesome. All right, so we get 58T equals six times 29. We're just doing a little cross multiply, right? No big deal. Uh, we divide that by 58, probably three, yep. So T is three. Okay. Uh, this one, we get y times y, which is y squared. 3 times 27 is 81. And so we get y squared equals 81. So we get y, we take the square root, and we get y equals plus or minus 9. In this case, we get 16 times 4, which is 64. And we get x times 1, which is, which is basically x uh, minus 1 squared. And again, a couple ways to go from here. You could take the square root of both sides if you want or we can just multiply it out and then factor it. Um, I'll multiply it out. And so we get, so it's basically, you know, it's X minus one times X minus one. So we get X squared uh, minus two X plus one. And then we're gonna subtract 64 because we need to get this to zero. So X squared minus two X minus 63. Well, two things that multiply to get to 63, uh, nine and seven, which is good because those are two apart. So we know it's gonna be X uh, minus nine, because that's going to be the bigger number there, x plus seven. 
Um, and so our two values, I'm just going to go over here now, x equals both um, 9, positive 9, and negative 7, which are both fine in this case. All right. The, oops, scroll too far. Uh, the ratio of the sides of the length of an isosceles triangle are 4 to 4 to 7. Perimeter is that. So again, 4 parts to 4 parts to 7 parts is going to be 52.5. All right, so we get 15x equals 52.5. Is 3.5. So each part is 3.5 and not quite done yet. So the base, it asked me for the base. So in an isosceles triangle, we have two legs and a base, and the two legs are the ones that are congruent. So if the two legs are congruent, we know that's the one that the base has to be the seven one. It's not always the biggest, but it is going to be the sort of the, the lone one, the one that's sort of not congruent to anything else. So we get seven times 3.5, and oops, seven times 3.5. Hey, we get 24.5. So when we plug it back into this one, we get 24.5 would be the base of the triangle here. Ratio of angle measures of a parallelogram. A parallelogram is a four-sided figure. And if we didn't know what the angles added up to, we could always do use this formula. But we, it ends up being 360, so we're kind of good there. So 2 to 3 to 2 to 3. Um, so how many sort of parts that we have 10 parts total if i add those up we know it's going to be uh added up to 30 uh, 360 so each one each part is going to be 36 so each angle uh is going to is going to be well if it's two to three two is going to be 72 um 36 times three is going to be 108 which makes sense and then two uh well it's the same thing right so 72 to 108 those are going to be their the, the actual side lengths. They're not really a ratio. They're just the side. Those are the four sides. Okay. A couple more proportions we got to solve. Uh, all right. So we get 6y equals 72. Um, and so when we, oops, uh, so yeah, sorry, 72. All right. So then we get y is 12. Awesome. Cross multiply 35x equals uh, 14 times 50 is 700. Divide that by 35, and we get 20. All right, so we get 8z equals 36. All right, so z is going to be, I think that's 3.5. 4.5, sorry. That's what I meant. Okay, cool. All right. Uh, here we go, 2m plus 2, so we have to, have to square this one, or well, let's do it the other way this time. So we do 2m plus 2 times 2m plus 2, which is just squared, equals 36. So when I take the square root of both sides, I get plus or minus 6 on this side, and 2m plus 2. So I'm subtracting 2 from both sides. So I have negative 2 plus or minus 6, uh, and then I divide both sides by 2. So basically, my two answers are this. And so we can, let's just simplify those. So negative 2 plus 6 would be 4 over 2, which is 2. And then we have negative 2 minus 6, which is negative 8, divided by 2, which is negative 4. So our two values are going to be 2 and negative 4. If I factored it, it would have got the same thing. It would have all been good there. 5y times uh, y is 5y squared. Uh, 16 times 125 is 2,000. Uh, divide that by 5 is 400, so y squared equals 400. Square root of that is going to be 20, so in this case, plus or minus 20. Bam. All right. Got some multiple choices to finish it out. An 18-inch uh, stick breaks into three pieces. The ratio of the length of the pieces is 1 to 4 to 5, which of these is not a length of one of the pieces. So let's find all these lengths of these pieces. Basically, there are going to be 10 parts total. Right, because 1 plus 4 plus 5, 1x plus 4x plus 5x is 10x equals 18. So we know each piece um, is just going to be one, or each uh, sort of factor, the factor, each part, I guess I should say, is going to be 1.8. And so uh, 1.8 is going to be 1 because that's going to be this one. Uh, this one. Like it's, so the lengths are going to be 1.8 uh, and then 4 times 1.8, which is 7.2. Basically, if you could figure out which one, uh, you know, divided by, you know, didn't divide evenly into, sorry, uh, wait, five times 1.8 uh, is nine. 
so the, the side lengths are there. So 7.2 doesn't, uh, is not, uh, 7.2 is one, nine is one, 3.6 uh, is not one. And I, the thing that I said about dividing doesn't work in this case, because 3.6 does uh, divide evenly with, with 1.8, but that's okay. So which of the following is equivalent to this? Well, basically what I'll do is I'd cross multiply this. So when I cross multiply, I get 3y equals 5x. So I'm just going to check the one. I'm going to cross multiply these if I need to and figure out which one is the, is the equivalent. Well, if I multiply this one across, it would be 5y equals 3x, which is not that. In this case, I get 3x equals 5y. I didn't have to do anything. That's obviously not it either. In this case, I cross multiply and get 5x equals 3y. Oh, look, those do match up. So this is the equivalent. And clearly the last one is not. All right, we got a salad dressing calls for oil and vinegar, five to two, basically five parts to two parts. All right, so we get seven sort of parts total. Um, all right, it says if you use one and actually in this case, we don't even need to find the parts. So it's five to two. So five over two is our fraction of uh, oil to vinegar. Okay. And so it says we're using one and a quarter cup of oil. So oil is on top. So if we're using 1.25 cups of oil, how many cups of vinegar? So it's basically we're writing out this proportion and we're solving it. And so we get 5x equals uh, 2.5, right? So with 2.5 divided by 5 is just a half. Um, so x equals 0.5 or one half. So one half cup of vinegar is what we need. So that'd be cup, cup vinegar. Awesome. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you got them all right.